This is the more benign public face of North Korea, the mass games held annually in the capital Pyongyang and now a tourist attraction. In 1953, the US and North Korea signed a truce which paused but did not officially end the Korean War. More than 2 million people lost their lives, including nearly 37,000 U.S. troops. China's economic and diplomatic ties with North Korea make it one of the few countries with influence in Pyongyang. And Chinese Premier Wen Jiabao has just visited North Korea, aiming to persuade leader Kim Jong-il to return to the negotiations over its nuclear program. North Korea suggested the talks could be revived on condition that progress was made first in relations with the U.S. Back in China, Korea Tours is a British-run company based here in Beijing, and the general manager has a unique perspective in doing business in North Korea. The company specializes in travel to North Korea and is one of the very few Western companies working with the country. Many in the West may see North Koreans as living in isolation, receiving no outside news and locked in a repressive totalitarian state. But Simon Cockrell has first-hand experience and he believes engagement is the right thing. Uh, they understand the needs and requirements of the business uh, and things can be difficult but that's not really down to the individuals that we work with, it's just down to uh, hoops that have to be jumped through in terms of doing paperwork really. Simon Cockrell also spoke about restrictions concerning international visitors to North Korea. There are limitations on photography, although not as strict as most people imagine. Um, you have to ask if it's okay if you can take photos. Most of the time it is, but occasionally it's not. And this is usually at what the North Korean side considers to be sensitive military places. And considering they have a very large army, there are a lot of sensitive military places. Also, um, you're not allowed to just wander off on your own during your free time. The other restrictions are mainly on um, uh, things you can take in. For example, mobile phones, cell phones. Despite the fact that they have a mobile phone network there now this year, um, it's, you're still not allowed to take in a mobile phone. And obviously it's not an open society and it's not a place where you can just get a visa, show up and then go off on your own. There are a lot of restrictions on the movement of foreigners and especially foreign tourists around. You have to be in a group, even if your group is just one person, you're still a group. Uh, each group is accompanied by two Korean guides. Uh, you have to have a program planned in full in advance and you can't just uh, you know, go and knock on someone's door and see if you can uh, go to their house for dinner. There's a certain amount of places you can go and things you can see and that's basically that. But they are restricted from the North Korean side. So basically North Korea admits people travelling on US passport only during the period of this Mass Games Festival which is a huge artistic, gymnastic, propagandistic performance of 100,000 people which takes place uh, in the evenings in the world's largest stadium and it's sort of hard to describe. It's the sort of event which makes the Olympic opening ceremony look like a school play. It's sometimes said that you make peace with enemies, not with friends. And President Obama came into office saying he wanted to demonstrate that engagement is more effective than antagonism. As Simon Cockrell's business indicates, North Koreans may have much to share with the rest of the world, and vice versa. But for the short term, the country and its people will probably continue to be scrutinized on the basis of the leadership's actions.